Uh, my name is Nathan Borg. Uh, I am heading up uh, two uh, projects for Tuol in Denmark, um, doing all the mixed fermentation beers and uh, barrel aged uh, barrel aged stouts and, and, and barley wines and things. Uh, so yeah, um, we have the new brewery that they built. Uh, a year and a half ago or so. Um, yeah, so we, we started uh, producing wort in February last year. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of just started started getting things together, putting a lot of beer down in oak. Um, just now we're starting to see a lot of, lot of some beers coming out um, and it's just going to evolve over time. Um, uh, yeah. what what kind of uh, sour and mixed fermentation beers? What's the what's the idea behind that? Is that a new area, or is this just ramping up production? Because it, it, it's I think it, ultimately it, it all comes down to uh, I mean uh, Tool previously when they were, um, uh, contract brewing uh, they weren't there was someone limited to to do some of the mixed firm beers and the owner tour uh, he you know it's just a, it's a big love of his right so so as soon as we bought we uh, we got the the new site it's it's got so there's so much room for us to do anything we want there um, that it kind of allows all these special projects to just be yeah to, to kind of come to fruition I guess so he was um, tour was really keen on on really wrapping that mixed firm um, side up and, and kind of creating it from you again. Um, and then of course, uh, along with that, all the barrel aged uh, stouts and, and, and barley wine and things. Um, uh, so we've got a dedicated building for both of those those things, um, split down the middle. So there's no, you know, there's no uh, cross contaminations and so forth. Um, yeah, and then, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of this, um, there's a lot of kind of mixing between all these things because of course we have the distillery which is in a separate building so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of use from uh, once we're finished with barrels uh, in the stout room they then go to the distillery to be used for spirit, aging spirits for five ten years or whatever they uh, it may be um, so yeah it's really it's really nice setup um, we're lucky enough to on site we have the tunnels that connect all the buildings so we pump work straight from the brew house to the mixed fermentation room um, or to the to the barrel aging room, um, which is really really convenient. And yeah, it is just yeah, it's just just at the at the birth of the mixed firm stuff. You know, we're going in a direction, and I think you know it might also change slightly and evolve over the years. But um, yeah, we're off to a nice start where we're pretty happy with it. What were the names of the first brews that came out of that? Um, ooh. The first, the first couple um, was some, I guess, somewhat, somewhat quicker turnaround uh, mixed fermentation beers. Um, uh, one called Cutting Clouds, which is a, a somewhat, you know, grisette based, not not hyper uh, traditional grisette, of course, um, but something really, really light. Um, only three months of age in oak, uh, dry hopped, and just really, really fresh and chuggable. As though it's got that, it's got some of those, that that funk. Uh, that they were looking for, but in just uh, a less complex kind of package, I guess. Um, that was really fun. Um, similar to that, uh, I did a, a table beer that um, uh, with some local elderflower when it was harvested. Um, and that's, yeah, it's really wild and very herbaceous. And, and um, yeah, like th those two were the first things to come out. Um, now we're starting to see, yeah, a few more things, a few more blended, um, uh, a big blends of, of different barrels of different ages. Now we can, um, we're starting to do, that will be out in the next few months. Um, yeah. And your background, how did you, you're, you're a New Zealander. Yeah. What's your interest? How did you ever end up in Denmark? Uh, I, well, I think uh, I've always been, I guess I grew up in hospitality. So my mother was a chef and had bakeries and, and, and restaurants and bistros and, and all, all these things. And so it was a very like production orientated, like growing up, I guess, um, and, and creative as well. So I always did that. And then through high school, I worked in the cafes and so forth. And same thing when I left school. So uh, the coffee was my first love, I guess. Um, so I went deep into the coffee industry for 13 years or so. Um, when I moved to Australia, um, 
and yeah, so roasting coffee for many years and doing some fun projects there. Um, and then I was out for the last few years while I was doing that. I was, I was brewing beer at home as a hobby and really getting into that more. Um, yeah, and I really loved it, but I kept it a hobby. And then when I moved to Copenhagen, I just felt like I would maybe just try leave the leave the coffee behind and uh, and try to get into the commercial beer um, a, as a job. So so yeah, so I was lucky enough, you know, right plan, right right place, uh, right time kind of thing. So uh, Tuol were just building um, their brew pub in Copenhagen. So I got on there at the bar, which then led to getting a chance to help out in the brewery um, and then while I was making clean beer there at the brewery then still doing the mixed fermentation stuff in my basement at home um, and then yeah and the, uh, the owners the owners had, had tasted some of those beers uh, and really liked them so when it, when it came time to when they they bought the, the new property to build the brewery and, and kind of fulfill that dream um, for them uh, then yeah I just jumped onto that so yeah, it's been pretty short. It's been a pretty short. Uh, um, yeah, I got very lucky and, and just and just got into it. But I, I really love it. And it's like, and yeah, there's so much there's potential for creativity more so than in the coffee roasting. You know, that it's where that's more. It's more sourcing and and, and things um, and profiling and maybe yeah, it's restricted in some ways. I think so. Yeah, I love it. I'm sure that coffee experience will go into some of the stouts eventually. Yeah, it, it, already, it, it already has. Yeah, yeah, it already has. So yeah, um, and yeah, we saw some really nice coffees and and starting to look and looking into really really good ways to to, to get that coffee through for the for the stouts and things. Um, we've had really good success with them, um, and then it's nice for me to kind of dabble in the old. Uh, you know the old things that I used to story. do. Yeah. And where do you go from here? Uh, you, you're starting the fermentation. And, yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, from here is from here is still the start, because you know with with the mixed fermentation project, it's it's really in its infancy. I am. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm really happy where it's at now, um, but I've got some ideas, and we're working on stuff that right now that maybe is a year or more away, that I'm really excited about. So I'm kind of like living in the future. I'm I'm really excited about. Uh, what's next I guess so yeah I mean it's just about over the next uh, five years or, or more just try and develop that not try and reinvent the wheel but also but try and find some some interesting things I mean for me like drinkability is always high on the priority um, and then we've also we're going to start some interesting uh, mead projects as well we've got we got some uh, some uh, local producers that are that we're working with and and it's just something fun again we've got the space to do it um, and it's just a fun thing and then it kind of that's that element of uh, you know that local that local uh, tewa in a way I guess um, yeah excellent great to see that and I guess the Danish craft beer scene is just really taking off now that yeah. people are noticing it yeah I mean it is it, it is it's, it's still big um, and yeah it's growing and everyone's interested uh, um, and I think and there's not many mixed fermentation breweries uh, in Denmark. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we're trying to convert a lot of people over to, to try some of these and, and then, yeah. I mean, for me, I'm just so influenced by the, or, you know, the, the Belgian beers and, 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 and a lot of stuff from France as well that I'm now tasting <laughs> a lot more of it. And um, yeah, so, you know. I, I just love saison and, and 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 those really drinkable styles and things that that go well with food. So I guess for the for the beers that I'm making, I'm I'm trying to I guess combine that. You know, there's always there's almost always going to be a, a acid quality, um, but yeah, trying to keep the drinkability of the, the saison and and, uh, and and things like that. All right, man. Thank you so much and great talking to you. No worries.